I took the Fosun Lake environment, made it bigger, and overlaid the Q values on top of each cell. Now you can see Q learning happening in real time. Let me show you how to get a copy of this, and then I'll show you how it works. Hop over to my GitHub page and clone this project. I have the project open in Visual Studio Code. The two files to pay attention to is the one named Frozen Lake Enhanced. This is the Frozen Lake environment with my modifications. The other file is the Frozen Lake underscore QE file. This is the training file. At the top of my training file, this is where I register my custom environment and then create an instance of it. The remainder of the code is pretty much the same as what I have walked through in this video. Let's hop down to the bottom. I'm going to run training for 15,000 episodes. Training is turned on. Rendering is turned on. I'm going to hit F5. If you don't have Frozen Lake installed, check out this video. Okay, we can see that all the Q values have been initialized to zero. Remember that rewards are not given out until the agent finds the goal, which is at the bottom right here. It's probably going to take several hundred or even thousands of episodes before the agent actually finds its way to the goal. What we can do is hit the equal sign to increase the speed or the frames per second. The frames per second is shown up here on the top right. I can also hit zero to maximize the frames per second. Depending on how fast your computer is, you might get a higher frames per second. I'm recording right now, so this is not as great as it should be. We can see that one of the Q values came in, but even at this speed, it's still not fast enough. So what we can do is hit the nine key to turn off the screen animation, and then training is gonna be much, much faster. So I'm gonna hit nine and then wait for a few seconds and then see how far it gets. So we're at 300 episodes right now. I'm gonna hit nine, wait a few seconds, hit nine again. You can see that it jumped from 300 episodes to over 2200 episodes within three seconds. Now the Q values are much more interesting. We can see the Q values being updated in real time. I'm gonna hit one to slow the animation back. I can hit the minus key to bring it all the way down to one frame per second. Within each cell, the largest Q value is bolded. It is considered the best action, at least at this moment. Remember that the slippery flag is turned on. So even if the agent follows the best action, there's still a 33% chance that it might slip to one side and 33% chance it might slip to the other side. Note that I can hit the escape key to exit the map at any time, but the training progress is going to be lost. So at this point, I'm going to hit the 9 key, let the training happen in the background. I set it to 15,000 episodes, so maybe within a minute it should be done. When it's done, the window is going to close by itself. You can see that I'm displaying four decimal places. Uh, there's going to be some Q values that's even smaller than uh, four decimal places. So that's why here you can see that it's all zero, it's four zeros, but it's, uh, it's still bolded. That means there's actually a number in there. Okay, now that training is done, it created two new files. The PNG file is a graph of the progress. So after about 10,000 episodes, the agent is able to get the reward pretty consistently. So it looks like our training is good. We can go back here. I can run it for maybe 10 episodes. Turn off training. Keep rendering on. I'm hitting F5. Now, since we're not training, the Q values are not going to change. It loaded our trained Q table onto the map and the agent is following the actions based on the best Q values within each cell. All right, I hope this helps you in your reinforcement learning journey. You can help my channel out by hitting the subscribe button, liking the video, and dropping me a comment. I will catch you in the next one.